Hey gang, Craig Ripley here. Welcome once again to my YouTube channel I call Living Off the Slab. Today I am out in the yard and I thought we would talk about some more modifications that I've done to this little WR250R from Yamaha uh, to make it into a little mini adventure bike. So let's just do a quick review of why I purchased the Yamaha WR250R. So my goal is not just to do some dual sport riding with the bike. I want to turn this into, like I said, a little mini adventure touring bike. Because I would like to do things like the Mid-Atlantic BDR, the Northeast BDR, and maybe the Trans-America Trail at some point. And I think having a smaller bike would benefit me as an older guy. So, I sourced the bike from Moms in Foxborough, Massachusetts, and most of the parts that I've been putting on it come from Rocky Mountain ATV or Twisted Throttle. So in the last video I did, we talked about the things that I did to change out the handlebars and other parts of the cockpit for the bike to make it all more comfortable and more usable for me. And you can take a look at that video to see what I did. In fact, there's going to be an update on that video to uh, correct a mistake that I made. And yes, I do make mistakes and I do own up to them. Before we get started on this video, if you like what we're doing here on this channel, please subscribe and hit that bell so that you get notified when new videos come out. Also, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter for as little as one, maybe two dollars a month. It goes a long way to help keep these videos coming. There are also many other ways to support the channel like buying t-shirts or taking a look at my little ebook. Again, all of that just goes a long way to help keeping these videos coming. And one more thing before we get started is that I've had a lot of requests to put out the GPX files of my 60-day trip that I did last year. So I've been putting a package together uh, with a spreadsheet that goes along with all of the GPX files with little hints and all of the hotels and things that I stayed at along the way to give you guys as much information as possible. So I'm going to be putting a link to that out on my vlog website and that is www.livingoffthislab.com and also my touring company website that is www.offtheslabtours.com and what I thought I would do is just charge a small amount of money for these uh, GPX files and all the work that goes into them and I was thinking like a dollar a day so it would be sixty dollars to download and have all of the information that I gathered and all of the videos that I've created that goes along with this ride if you want to do it yourself. The first thing I want to talk about in this video is some protection that I added to the WR and we'll start off with this skid plate. Right, I put a skid plate in there to help protect the engine of this bike when we take it off-road. And I got that from Rocky Mountain ATV and it's from Flatland Racing. It ran about $110. The second thing I added was this aluminum radiator protector from, again, Flatland Racing. Again, sourcing it through Rocky Mountain ATV. Right, and again, this is just to protect that radiator, give myself a little greater peace of mind when going off-road. And the cost on that, well, that was $69. So the next piece of protective equipment I got was this little shark fin, again, to protect my rear brake rotor. And I picked that up on Amazon from uh, JFG Racing, and I think it cost around $30. So in addition to those protective pieces, I also added some larger foot pegs. I got those from IMS foot pegs, and uh, they're really great. I really love their products. I have them on the Yamaha Super Tenere and said so they just really give me a lot more comfort and a lot more control of the bike. Uh, they run about $200 for this set and this is the rally peg for the WR250R. 
Now also I got this from Altrider that it's a larger brake platform for the bike. Now Altrider does not make one for the WR250R. This one though fits the Yamaha Super Tenere and it also works on the brake pedal for the WR. Now along with this larger brake platform Right, you can also get this piece, which I purchased, but I'm not using on this bike. And this gives you, again, that higher position so that you can get to the brake more easily. On my Yamaha Super Tenere, this really comes in handy. But I found that on the WR, I don't need that here. Right, Just this larger brake platform really helps me to find the brake more easily. Now, when installing this brake platform here you do have to make some adjustments to your lever right so that the lever is just a little bit below your height of the foot peg right so in order to do that you can adjust it here and here right so that everything works and when you hit the pedal there now your uh, rear brake light will come on I've read some things online about people having to stretch the springs and all of that kind of stuff and maybe that was true on previous models but for me on this one I did not have to do that I simply lowered the uh, pedal as far as I could here and then adjusted the uh, spring tension here and everything worked just fine. Keeping with the idea that I want to make this bike more comfortable so that I can do some touring on it, I decided to change out the stock saddle, which most people would agree it's not very good. Uh, but anyway, I decided to put on the uh, Seat Concepts uh, Comfort Saddle, again made specifically for the Yamaha WR250R, and I got that from Rocky Mountain ATV, and it ran about $285. Now I know that does sound like a high price to pay for a seat, but um, it is a great improvement. It makes a huge difference in how this bike feels to ride over long distances. I did a two-day trip here recently that I'll do another video on, but I can tell you that this seat being a little bit wider and having much more support, again, makes a huge difference. And the last thing I want to talk about in this video is this Tusk tail rack that I got from Rocky Mountain ATV, and it ran about $60. The thing that I really like about this rack is that it mounts directly to the subframe of the bike and not just onto the plastic fender like some of the other racks are out there. Uh, it was pretty easy to put on and it seems to work great so far. Uh, I took it out on this one trip that I mentioned earlier and I had a bag of about 25 pounds or so up on top of it and it handled the load just fantastically and the bike did great with the load up there. All right, guys, so that's it for today. We'll have another video coming. Like I said, a correction to a mistake that I made when putting on my uh, hand guards up there. And then also, we went out and did a two-day tour on this bike, myself and another friend, and uh, we had a great time, uh, even though it was during this COVID crisis. So uh, look for that coming real soon.